Hello guys! Today's episode, we will talk about the interpretation of z-test results. And we have two objectives, to interpret the z-test results and to provide a discussion of those results. In our previous video that can be accessed to the link bit.ly slash fatsrv4, we performed the z-test analysis to determine if there is a significant difference between the math grades of male and female students. So now, we will use the output of the z-test to interpret those statistical information. And we, here is the output of that z-test. So the first information is the mean, which simply tells us that the average grade of the male group is 66.65 and the average grade in math of the female group is 64.51, which obviously we can say that probably the male group performs better than the female group because the male group has a higher mean compared to the female group. But again, the question is, why do we need to perform the z-test? Well, we need to perform the z-test to identify if the 2.14 mean difference is significant enough to conclude that the male students from this population perform better in math than the female group. The second information in this table is the known variance. However, for the discussion purposes, we will be using the standard deviation instead of the variance. And, and to compute for the standard deviation, all we have to do is to get the square root of the corresponding variance of each group. So for the male, the standard deviation is the square root of 45.53, which is 6.75. And for the female, we have 9.54. The variance or the standard deviation simply tells us the dispersion of the grades of the students within a group from their average grade. So in this example, we can say that the math grades of the male students are closer to each other compared to the math grades of the female students. Furthermore, we can infer that the male grades are within this range, 59.90 to 73.39. Similarly, the grades of the female are within the range 54.97 to 74.05. However, if you go back to the data set, you might notice some grades that are outside this confidence interval. Actually, we call them the outliers. So the next information from this table is the observations. And this simply tells us that there are 207 grades utilized under male group, and there are 224 grades utilized under female group. And if you notice, the number of data gathered per group are not actually the same, but it's okay. But it is actually encouraged possible to make the sample size equal. The next information from this table is the hypothesized mean difference that is equal to zero, which refers to the two hypotheses, namely null hypothesis. That is, there is no significant difference between the means of the grades of the male and female students and the alternative hypothesis, which refers to the, the statement telling that there is a significant difference between the means of the grades of the two groups. But how do we know which one of these hypotheses will be used for our conclusion? So in that case, we'll be using a decision rule. So and there are two options. You can either use option one or option two. So let's have first the option one, and that is to compare the computed P 2.05. And if it happens to be less than 0 0.05, then we will reject the null hypothesis and conclude the alternative hypothesis. Otherwise, we will not reject the null hypothesis and conclude the null hypothesis. However, in this example, we have two computed P, one for one tail and one for two tail. So which one are we going to use to be compared to 0 0.05? But if you have to look in this example, both of the values are actually less than 0 0.05. So regardless which one to be used, the conclusion is still rejecting the null hypothesis and saying that there is a significant difference. But for validity purposes, we have to select an appropriate P value to be compared to 0 0.05 and we'll go back to the zero value for the hypothesis mean difference because this value also tells us that the test is two-tailed so therefore we'll be using the p value for the two-tailed test which is 0 0.006 and since the computed p value is less than 0 0.05 then we will reject the null hypothesis and of course conclude the alternative hypothesis so therefore at 95% level of confidence, we can say that there is a significant difference between the mean grades of male and female students and mathematics. 
Furthermore, you can say that the group with a higher mean, in this example, is the male, performed better than the female group. So the second option is to compare the Z-critical to the corresponding value of 0 0.05 in the Z-distribution. In this case, that is 2.71. So if the Z-critical happens to be less than 2.71, then we'll reject the non-hypothesis and conclude the alternative hypothesis. Otherwise, we do not reject the non-hypothesis and conclude the non-hypothesis. So in this example, the computed Z-critical is 1.96 and that happens to be less than 2.71. So therefore, we will reject the non-hypothesis and conclude the alternative hypothesis. So now, how are we going to provide a discussion of results to those information that we just interpreted? So here's the example of that presentation of results. We have that in tabular form and supported by the paragraph form. But you might be wondering where those information from the table came from. So actually, they came from the z-test output. So the n came from the observation row. We have the mean came from the mean row of the same output of the z-test. We have the sd. In this case, it's the computed sd of the, their corresponding variances. And we have the C or the P value for the total test. So for this example, our conclusion may look like this. The Z test was utilized to determine if there is a significant difference in the mean grades of male and female students in mathematics. A total of 431 students participated in the survey, where 207 or 48% are males and 224 or 52% are females. Female students have a higher mean grade in math, indicate the mean in SD. Compare, the female, compare to female students. Table 3 shows that there is a significant difference between the math grades of male and female students. Again, indicate the p value which is less than 0 0.05. Thus, at 95% level of confidence, we can say that the male students perform better in math than female students. I guess that's it for today. Thank you for watching.